condemnation upon the earth in all its depths of shame. You see, he's trying to draw, draw out that great expanse for you. If you don't see his previous glory, though you understand something of his shame, you will not see the great expanse. Or if you understand vice versa, you're still not going to grasp what's really going on. You must understand the height of his glory and the depth of his shame that you may fully take joy in what he's done. Now, who can tell us the majesty of Christ? When he was enthroned in the highest heavens, he was very God of very God. By him were the heavens made and all the hosts thereof. By his power he hanged the earth upon nothing. His own al almighty arm upheld the spheres. The pillars of the heavens rested upon him. The praises of angels, archangels, cherubim, and seraphim perpetually surround him. <coughs> the full chorus of the hallelujahs of the universe unceasingly flowed to the foot of his throne. And you think he needs man? If every man on earth were to reject him fully and completely, countless, not infinite, but nearly infinite hosts of angelic beings, one of them probably far more glorious than the whole of humanity, and they do nothing but worship, serve, and obey his every command. You think he needs you? He reigns supreme above all his creatures, God over all, blessed forever. Who can tell his height then? And yet, he, yet this must be attained before we can measure the length of that mighty stoop which he took when he came to earth to redeem our souls. Now, let me share something with you. Before I heard this quote from Spurgeon, I set upon myself, to write this section about the height of Christ, knowing that unless you understand his height and his pre-existence, you can't understand his depth and his incarnation. Now, Spurgeon didn't teach me that. I didn't learn that from Martin Lloyd-Jones. I learned that from the scriptures. But the point I want to make is this. It is very, very glorious to learn something from a man. It is wonderful any time you learn anything by any means about God. But it is exceedingly wonderful when you learn something from Scripture taught by the Holy Spirit and then have it confirmed by men far more wise and more mighty in the Scriptures than you. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And that's what I want you to see. That's true Bible study. When you wrestle with the Scripture and wrestle with the Scriptures until you have taken out every drop that is to be taken out, like squeezing a grape, and then you go and study the great theologians and preachers of the past and find that although they can say it more eloquently and with greater power, they are merely saying what you have already been taught by God. That's a great joy. Just look at it this way. You take a washcloth full of water and let my little boy squeeze it. Now he's pretty strong for his age, but he's not a mature man by any means. So he squeezes that washcloth with everything he's got and he says, Daddy, I got all the water out. And then I take the washcloth and I squeeze it and drain out more water than he's already got in his bowl. Now that's kind of the way it is when you're dealing with a Spurgeon or an Edwards or someone else. I'm going to but I am going to squeeze that rag with all my might. The might in me might be very small. My power to draw from that cloth all the water in it, it may be an impossibility. But I'm going to squeeze it until I get out every drop and then hand it over to Spurgeon. Now, and who on the other hand can tell how he descended? To be a man was something, but to be a man of sorrows was far more. To bleed and die and suffer. These were much for him who was the Son of God. 
but to suffer as he did such unparalleled agony, to endure as he did a death of shame and a death of desertion of his God. This is a lower depth of condescending love which the most inspired mind much utterly fail to fathom. And yet must be first, and yet must we first understand infinite height and then infinite depth. We must measure, in fact, the whole infinite that is between heaven and hell before we can understand the love of Jesus Christ. See what his goal is? His goal is to understand the love of Jesus Christ. That's his goal. But he realizes he must do certain things in order to understand that love. What? He must climb to the heights and he must dig down to the depths. So that in that great expanse he can understand something of the love of Jesus Christ. You must do the same. A lot of preliminary work, gentlemen. A lot of preliminary work. You can't get treasure without digging. You can't see stars without straining the neck. Now, there's one, one thing that Spurgeon says here before we go on I think is very important. If you read any bit of 